implicit differentiation. Not as difficult as everybody thinks. So I came across this great example and you're asked, let's say you're asked to find dy dx and you're given an equation that looks like looks like this. We've got the y squared minus x squared times y plus the 3x cubed equals 4. We're just going to take them one term at a time and uh, find the dy dx. Uh, the one thing you just got to remember is every time we just take the derivative of, of, a, of a y term, we're just going to tack on a dy dx. And it really is that easy if you just try not to think of why we're doing this or why your teacher is assigning problems like this. The bottom line is that you have to just learn it and, and move on with your life. So the first term here, we're going to use the power rule just like we would uh, any other normal day. So we've got, and we're taking the derivative, remember, so we're going to have to tack on the dy dx to this one term. So we've got 2y, and like I said, the dy dx there, minus, and this term right here, we're going to have to use the product rule for that. So let's just try to keep this as neat as possible. So first term, x squared times the derivative of the y, which is 1, but since we're taking the derivative in implicit differentiation, we still have to put on that dy dx here. A lot of people get messed up with this move. They just think it's just going to be 1, and you, you won't see it because 1 times x squared is just x squared, but that's not the case. So do that plus, plus the second term, y. We're not taking the derivative this time, so we don't have to put the dy dx with that term times the derivative of x squared, and that is 2x. And what's next here? So we've got the 3x cubed, derivative of that, 9x squared equals, and the derivative of any constant equals 0. I am just going to scroll down a little bit here. Okay, so our next step here is to isolate the terms that contain dy dx. I'm just going to take it one at a time. So on this side, we're going to keep the dy dx term. So we've got the 2y, oops. 2y dy dx, and and trust me, this is going to be uh, become second nature to you. Actually, let's let's uh, simplify this first. So we've got minus, and then in parentheses here, x squared times one dy dx. So x squared dy dx minus right here. Remember, this is going to be a minus. You can do y. 2x or 2xy, whichever you choose. That's the end of the parentheses there. Plus 9x squared equals 0. Going further, like I said, we need to get the dy dx terms alone on one side of the equation. So to do that, we're just going to leave these on, on this side for now, just the way they are. And we'll, we'll clean this up and factor out the dy dx in a minute. Okay. Equals. And what I'm going to do here is take this term here and this term and get them to the other side of the equation. So to do that, just regular algebra, we're going to add this term to this side. So we're adding the plus y2x 
to both sides, right? Okay. So y2x. And then we're going to subtract this one. Starting to get a little messy, but I apologize for that. Hopefully you can still follow along. So minus 9x squared on this side. All right, so now we have the dy dx terms on one side, which is perfect. So we're just going to factor out the dy dx, dy dx, and then in parentheses, the 2y minus the x squared equals I'm going to change this up to the 2xy because it just looks better minus 9x squared scrolling down here so now that we have the dy dx by itself we can divide this term here on both sides and what that does is this cancels out leaves the dy dx alone and then their final answer here and you can already see what the final answer is here but I'll rewrite it down here is going to be dy dx equals 2xy minus 9x squared all over 2y minus x squared.